What's up peeps, welcome back to Ask Dan Anything and I got a message sent in from a guy named Luke uh, who read one of my posts on Quora where I talked about why I believe almost everybody has low self-esteem in today's modern world and most first world countries. And I talked a bit about these different points as to why I believe that is and I've included a link, or I should include a link below uh, around those points. But it was a good question and I wanted to talk a bit more to it uh, because Luke's asked me, well, how did I form this opinion? Is it just formed on bias from working with coaching clients, or is there something deeper to it? And it's a mixture of both. That and some other things. So I wanted to talk about why I believe that a huge majority of the people in the first world or the western world have confidence problems, significant confidence, harmful confidence problems. Why I believe that almost everybody should be getting some form of coaching. Uh, and working on themselves for the benefit of the whole of society. Uh, when I first started forming this opinion was actually when I started doing my psychology degree. And that's when I started learning about statistics. Uh, the statistics of rates of depression and rates of anxiety in the Western world. Uh, the statistics are only really clear in the Western world because in third world countries, um, people aren't really assessing this stuff. They're too worried about uh, food and disease, you know. So, one of the things that stood out to me the most was my home country of New Zealand. We have the highest, and I think it's still true to this day, the highest rates of suicide, especially in men. And this makes no sense because according to World Health Organization Quality of Life Standards, the WHO uh, New Zealand's one of the best places to live in the world. There is no external reason for you to hate your life living in New Zealand compared with other countries. Um, and if you read Viktor Frankl's uh, Man's Search for Meaning, you'll realize, of course, that your external environment has little to do with your self-esteem. It's more about how you see yourself and your expectations and so on. But what, what stood out to me with this statistic was, how is it in a country where people have such a great life comparative to others... Do so many people so clearly hate themselves? I mean, what? there's very few other reasons for suicide. Some people will commit suicide to escape uh, painful persecution or something like that. But for most reason, it's heavy depression, heavy self-loathing, self-esteem issues, if you want to call it that. So, when I say that I believe most people have confidence issues, if you count depression, chronic anxiety, suicidality... Um, alcoholism, drug addiction, as clear, high correlations with low confidence, then you'll see that most of the world has one of those things. Most people will be able to tick something on that list regularly in their life. Um, and, and, and as I worked on this, and of course the reason I was working on learning about this stuff is because I was working on myself. I recognized that I had significant confidence issues in myself. I, I started to realize there are some warning signs. That if you watch someone's behavior, you'll clearly see that they have confidence issues that are undeniable. And I've given a few examples I wrote down here. Um, one of the main ones is people-pleasing or approval-seeking behaviors. When you try to get validation from someone else, it's undeniably a confidence problem to be a people-pleaser. Because you're trying to get someone else to tell you you're a good person. Only someone with confidence problems would do that. Somebody who loves themselves, who validates themselves, who believes in themselves, doesn't need anyone else to agree with them. So anyone who's looking for that agreement out externally has confidence issues, and the more someone does it, probably the bigger their confidence issues are. So if you look for people-pleasing behaviors, someone who won't say no at work, someone who's always trying to make people laugh, somebody who dresses to look good and be attractive, um, somebody who hides all their insecurities and only talks about their strengths, somebody who hides in the background so you can't see them at all, these forms of behavior, when you look for them, they're prevalent. It doesn't matter where you go, almost, which country you're in, it doesn't matter. You'll see so much people pleasing from so many people so consistently. So when I say I'm biased, I'm biased in that a lot of that is based on what I've seen and what others have reported to me as to what they've seen. But I invite you to go look for yourself. Go and look for the people pleasing behaviors and try and find people who don't do any of it because they're very rare. And in particular, I have a measure of confidence, which is honesty. I believe that confidence and honesty are not just correlated, but they're a cause and effect relationship. 
Somebody who is extremely confident will be extremely honest because they've got nothing to hide. Only l people lacking in confidence hide who they are because they're, they're afraid of the outcomes, they're afraid of the consequences, with the one exception perhaps being of manipulative psychopaths who have very high confidence and very low honesty. But if you look for how much people, especially how many people will hide their true emotions and feelings, how many people will hide their judgments and thoughts and opinions, and uh, how many people will hide their weaknesses and secrets, and you measure that as a, as a range of confidence, you'll see that most people only show you the tip of the iceberg, don't they? They only show you what's good about them by, in your eyes. They only show you the best and they hide all the worst. So when you combine all of this, not just the statistics of suicide and depression and all the kind of uh, binge drinking and all the stuff that shows low confidence, but also what you see every day and the way people behave, you'll be like me. You'll come to this conclusion that it's everywhere, that there's very few people who like who they are, enough to show it. And it's almost no matter what country I've been in. I've been in Southeast Asia, I've been in the Pacific Islands, Australia, New Zealand, been all around the United States, I've done a fair bit of traveling in Europe now, and I just keep seeing the same thing over and over. It's like a global culture of poor confidence. And it's most noticeable when you see an exception, when you see someone who just speaks their mind no matter what, you see someone who's at, at peace with their insecurities and willing to share them, uh, you see someone going for what they want even if other people disagree, you realize that stands out to you because of how rare it is to see. Most people are not doing that. Most people are following the code, following the rules. And that's why I have a strong opinion that most people in today's age have significant confidence problems in the first world countries. The only reason I, I say first world is because I'm not really sure what's happening in the other countries. Um, the, the research done there isn't re really much about psychology. It's much more about um, quality of life and external standards. But I'm, I have a hypothesis that actually in some of those worst countries, you know, if we talk about like Sierra Leone or Yemen or Saudi Arabia, some of those countries where quality of life for certain people is horrific, especially women, I do wonder if they would actually comparatively be more self-confident than the people who have the comfortable, cushy, bubble-wrapped life in the first world because they've had more trial and um, tribulations to go through and built inner strength. But that's just a hypothesis. I don't have a basis for that. Luke also goes on to ask, do only people with self-confidence problems go and get coaching? Like, is it... I, I, I got a sense of shame in the question where is it is it somehow a failure to need coaching? That you're admitting that you have confidence problems. If it's a failure to admit that you have confidence problems, then it's a failure to admit that you're a human being. Because being a human in today's age will cause you to have confidence problems. We're not set up for this environment. Our brain is constantly at odds with it. We're set up to be a foraging hunter-gatherer tribe, not to be people living in apartments and working 40 hours a week. We have a lot of problems. So the people who get coaching aren't the ones who necessarily have low self-esteem. They're actually the ones who believe in themselves enough to work on their confidence issues. Uh, the people who don't want to live a lie anymore. The people who feel that having integrity is more important than being impressive to other people. Those are the ones who get coached, at least they're the ones who get coaching with me, because I coach all around honesty and integrity. You know, the people who get coaching are the ones who are prepared to face difficult and uncomfortable situations, to look at themselves honestly in the mirror and go, fuck, I don't like a lot of what I'm seeing here, I've got to deal with it, and accept it or change it. Um, whereas most other people, which is, you know, nearly everyone doesn't get coaching, that's the kind of ratio here, very few people actually get coaching. The ones who don't, they're like athletes who don't have a coach, aren't they? They're just trying to do it all on their own because they don't want anyone to point out their weaknesses or they don't want to face very uncomfortable truths about themselves. You know, they don't want to explore that, hey, maybe this victim situation isn't actually a victim situation. Maybe I create all this shit. Maybe the reason my life sucks is because of the way I'm behaving, you know, or the way I see the world. So that's, that's my view. Obviously, I'm going to be very biased about being in support of people get coaching, most notably because I've spent, you know, many tens of thousands of dollars on coaching for myself. And of course, people spend their hard-earned money on coaching with me. So I'm going to be biased towards it, but I do it because I believe in it. You know, I don't believe in it because I do it. I do it because why on earth would you try and do this on your own? 
you know, we're a tribal species, we're, we're a communal species. We're not lone tigers wandering around. We're human beings, we're designed to collaborate and work together. Why would you deny yourself a life of confidence by trying to do it all on your own out of some sort of misguided pride? That's my thoughts anyway. So that's why I think that, that's why I have such a strong opinion that most people in the world have confidence issues. I believe these confidence issues are directly related to all the major suffering in the world, everything from child trafficking through to pollution to consumer greed can all be linked back to people having a problem with themselves, in my opinion with very few exceptions of some psychopathic or sociopathic people. And uh, that's why I'm so into it. So hopefully that answers the question. I am biased, but I am biased based on some fact as well. So Luke, thanks for sending that through. If anybody else has questions, send them through to dan at brojo.co.nz or join up to Brojo University if you want to work on this stuff or just subscribe to the YouTube channel if you just like getting free shit. It's all good. Cheers.